Ahoy! So you're wanting to try tanking in the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV with an expanded free trial which you can play through the entirety of A Realm Reborn in the award-winning Heavensward expansion up to level 60 for free with no restrictions on playtime. Well, before you get started, there are a couple of things you should know, like what's a tank buster, what are cooldowns, what's a raid wide, what's enmity? There are quite a few things. Oh, and if anybody asks anything about the void, you didn't see anything. Just leave it to me and I'll have you tanking faster than a Lalafell makes a gill. Let's begin. As I previously mentioned, the tank has quite a few things I need to keep track of. But don't worry, we're going to start from the beginning. As the tank, it's your job to make sure all the enemies are attacking you. And it's up to you to do this in the most efficient way possible. To make sure that they stay attacking you, you turn on something called Tank Stance. Aye, 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 aye. I said Tank Stance, not Stand. This stance increases the amount of enmity you produce. Enmity, in other words, is aggro. Each tank has their own version of this, but they all do the exact same thing. How do you keep track of it? Glad you asked, my little tank to be. If you look at the party bar, you'll see these little gauges under each icon. This bar shows how much enmity you have generated on that target. As the tank, this should be full and red at all times. If it's not, it means you do not have aggro. This number next to it also shows numerically who has the most enmity. The lower the number, the more enmity they have. If it's the letter A, it means you're at the top of the list with the most aggro. Additionally, you have an enemy list. If the icon next to it is red, it means you have aggro. Once you have the attention of all the enemies, you need to position them so your DPS and healers can do damage to them. You see, DPS have something called positionals. This little thing here, this tells them where the back and sides of the enemy are, so they know exactly where they need to hit. If you go running around in circles after you take aggro, your DPS won't be able to work as well because they can't consistently hit the sides or the rear, and they'll be pretty pissed. Make sure you keep them generally facing the same direction and not moving around unless you need to avoid AOEs. On this topic of positioning enemies, there is another thing I want to talk about, but we gotta go somewhere else and you won't like it. To those that are new, welcome to the Veil, the PTSD source to every tank and healer. No, seriously, it is. On the topic of positioning enemies, there is one thing I did want to go over. If you see a DPS put an AoE dot on the ground and the grouping you have has ranged enemies, they're going to keep attacking outside of the damage area unless you do something. What you need to do is walk past the AoE on the ground until the ranged enemies are within its perimeter. Then double back to make sure the melee enemies are within it as well so that every enemy is getting affected by the dot. Well, I think it's about time we leave the Veil. As much as I love it here, I really don't. Let's go. Moving on to the subject of pulling, I thought I'd give you guys my hot take on the topic. I apologize for nothing. When you're engaging on a group of mobs, keep in mind of any heal over time spells that you may have an effect on you. If you get in range of a mob, they will go to the healer if you're not fast enough. And never pull with your gap closer. These abilities don't generate enmity. If you use your gap closer to initiate on a group of enemies, you will not have generated enough aggro, and they will immediately start attacking either your DPS or your healer, and it will make getting control of that encounter that much more difficult than it needs to be. A good practice is initiating with your ranged enmity generation ability and then following it up with your AoE. This will ensure that you have enough aggro on all enemies you initiate with on your pull. There is another thing I want to discuss while we're on the topic of pulling mobs. 
for this, we're going to have to head back. While you're tanking in Final Fantasy XIV, you're going to hear a couple of different terms go around. One of them is big holes, or something similar. This means pulling more than one group of enemies. At lower levels, this is rather hard to do from a lack of toolset. You're not going to have all your abilities unlocked that will help you survive doing something like this. But at higher levels, you'll be pulling two, three, sometimes even more packs of mobs at once using your cooldowns to help you survive. Doing something like this requires teamwork from the healers and DPS together to be able to pull off. That being said, once you are able to do this, it is single-handedly one of the most enjoyable experiences in dungeon running. Although, there is a downside. If you do do this, if you go to the boss immediately after, the boss almost seems too easy in comparison. If you do end up taking a big pull, but end up failing, Try taking one less pack of mobs, so that way you could try to feel out what you can currently handle at your level. Maybe you just don't have enough abilities, or maybe your gear just isn't up to par. You'll be able to eventually feel out what you can handle and progress from there. This does lead us to our next topic. Let's get moving. While you're tanking, you're going to want to mitigate the amount of damage you take. This is where cooldowns come into play. Each tank has their own version of cooldowns. They are not all the same, and it will be up to you to learn how to use them properly. Some increase health, others mitigate damage like physical damage or magical damage, and others create a barrier around you. Having said that, you might be wondering, how do you tell whether an attack is physical or magical damage? Let me tell you, you would be surprised to hear a vast majority of the people who play this game have no idea how to tell. They usually say something along the lines of, well, if it looks magical, then it's magic damage. This is wrong. But don't worry, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can tell whether an attack is magical or physical damage. All you need to do is look at the bottom left of your screen. See that little cogwheel next to your chat tabs? Click that to open up your character configuration. It'll already be on the set page. You're gonna scroll down until you can see log filters. Click the tab of the chat you want to edit and then click the battle tab. Once there, you just need to click the drop down arrow and click engaged enemies. Once you do so, Make sure you have actions initiated by engaged enemies clicked on. With this on, you will see in your chat log that as an enemy starts to use an ability, it's gonna use specific terminology that you're gonna wanna take notice to. If an ability is casting or is cast, it means it's magic damage. If an ability is being readied or used, it's physical. If you noticed here, I used Dark Mind, which reduces magic damage on one ability, and Rampart, which reduces physical damage and magic damage on another. Here is the damage that I took while using Dark Mind and Rampart. As comparison, this is the amount of damage I would have taken had I not used any cooldowns. This comes out to a significant difference in the amount of damage you receive, making it easier on your healer so that they can focus on DPS. You might be wondering, what about LB3s? Tank Limit Break 3s reduce party damage received by 80%. That is an insane amount of damage reduction. Just a shame that you really won't be using this that often. Most LB3s go towards DPS or healers. At least in my experience, unless you're doing an endgame fight with a really high difficulty, you're really not going to be using this. Which is a shame, because they look epic. With all this talk of reducing damage and mitigation, that brings us to our next topic. Tank Busters. These are attacks from enemies that do ludicrous amounts of damage. These attacks are designed to kill you, the tank. Keep an eye out for these tank busters so that you will be able to mitigate them properly. There are various types of tank busters, 
like shared tank busters that require two tanks, and AoE tank busters that attack the tank and the area around them. You're probably wondering how do you know if it's a tank buster? It's because it hurts. A lot. The only real way to verify if an ability is a tank buster is by getting hit from it head on and kind of just watching your HP just disappear. Just take note of the ability's name so that the next time you see it show up, you'll be able to time one of your cooldowns to mitigate the damage you normally would have received. On the topic of reducing damage with your cooldowns, you do have another option. Invulnerability. This skill works differently depending on which tank you're playing, but it essentially stops you from dying by either completely negating all damage or stopping your health from being reduced past one. These abilities have very long cooldowns, so it's very important that you use them sparingly, only when you really need it. Let's continue. This is all a lot of ways a tank can mitigate damage on themselves, but as a tank, you're also able to mitigate damage for your allies. As you're tanking through dungeons and raids, you're going to notice that certain bosses use abilities that attack the entire raid or party. This can put you and your group in a heated situation. But part of your responsibility is using your party or raid-wide buffs. Each tank has their own versions of these, such as shields, magic damage reduction, or just flat damage reduction. It all depends on what tank you're playing. But one that they all share in common is a roll ability called Reprisal. What this does is it puts a debuff on the enemy by reducing the amount of damage they deal. Here, you can see the differences between using Reprisal and not. It makes a massive difference for your healers. This is useful not just for raid-wide attacks, but also tank busters. But it doesn't stop there, there's more. While tanking, you may come across a situation where you'll have a second tank in your party. If you do, you're going to want to learn how to do something called tank swapping. This is done in two different ways. One, you use an ability called Shirk. Essentially what this is doing is giving your aggro to the other tank. Make sure that your enmity is within 25% of each other, otherwise you're not going to swap aggro. The second way is by using an ability called Provoke. What this does is it forces your enmity to be at the top, thereby stealing the aggro from the other tank. This is especially useful if the main tank is incapacitated and is about to die. Tank swapping is something that takes communication and teamwork. Without the proper coordination and teamwork, you're going to find yourself in hot water. <clears throat> Moving on, we have other cooldown options as a tank. This other option is an ability called Interject. What this does is it allows you to completely cancel out an ability that an enemy is about to use. But it doesn't work on all of them. It only works on abilities that flash like this when they're being cast or readied. But it is the best type of damage reduction because it completely stops the attack. You do also have low blow, but I don't think anything outside of ARR can be cancelled with it. You do have to be cautious though. Some enemies will try to use a weaker ability to get you to cancel, and then use a stronger one following it up. With all these different cooldowns and abilities, you pretty much feel like you're ready. But there's one more that we need to go over. This is one of the strongest abilities in a tank's arsenal. No other skill allows you to stand in front of the boss, look into their eyes, and say, what are mechanics? Arm's Length is an ability that allows tanks to resist knockback effects from enemy attacks and mechanics. When utilized properly, this ability can make tanking incredibly easy. You're able to completely ignore certain mechanics so that you can focus on avoiding AoEs and keeping the boss where you want them. A word of caution. 
This does not work with every ability with a knockback. There are a few that are immune. With all that said, let's head back. Well, looking at the list, that's about it. I hope this was able to help you in any way, whether learning something new or reinforcing what you already know. Tanking in this game can be some of the most fun you can have, but it can also be frustrating if you don't understand some of the basics. Believe me, I know. Just keep at it, and you'll be tanking like a pro in no time. Good luck. Hey everyone, I wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, or comment below. I will be releasing many more videos covering healing, DPS, and the jobs themselves specifically, so there's a lot to look forward to. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.